job done. That's just how I approach everything, you know? So it don't matter who it is. We put together a game plan. Our coaches watch tape. They tell me what I need to do. I go out there and do it. You had the hot crowd uh, at home in Chicago. Obviously, yeah. the night after the fight, you brought up the Boo Birds. Uh, was there kind of a stark contrast uh, coming here and getting that reaction? Nah, really, honestly, I don't really care. Like, I try to be as professional as I possibly can be and understand that, you know, people get a little bit of alcohol in their system, they get a little rowdy. Look, this is, a, this is fighting. We're cage fighting. So people get a little crazy, you know. We're like uh, the modern-day gladiator, what they used to call us for a little bit. So I get people going to get amped up. But at the same time, man, I, I sacrifice a lot to do this. You know, putting that 8 to 12 weeks in a training camp, not eating what I want to eat, not drinking what I want to drink, and not spending time what I want to spend with my family, you know, being isolated to go out there and put on a display for people and for people to boo you and not understand what you're doing and pay respect and yeah, that bugs me a little bit. So, but at the end of the day, I had to let them know that when they get done booing, I'm gonna go cash this paycheck and I'm gonna be all right. Now you got a little more time off. Uh, you had the short turnaround, now you got some time. Are you gonna take some time off uh, or are you going right back to the gym? I'm gonna get back into the gym when my coaches text me. I do the same routine every single time. I go out there, I train, do my training camp, go and fight, compete, win, win or lose. I go home, I chill for a couple of days, and when I get that text message from my coaches, they tell me to get back in the building, I'm back in the building. Talking Tuesday, you seem very focused, get into the cage. Did the fight go the way you expected it to go? It was a little bit different, you know. I knew uh, going in there, I switched up my stance and my technique a little bit. I used a little bit more of a, a Taekwondo stance, a little bit more bounce in my movement. And then when, that, when you do that, it tends to make guys a little bit more defensive. So there was a lot of space between us, so it was very hard to be a little bit more offensive with my striking, which I wanted to do. But at the end of the day, I got the job done. You know, That's the benefit of being able to go from one technique to another technique, from going for a Taekwondo t technique to fighting in a clinch and being able to wrestle a guy. You know, So if one thing's not working, all right, well, let's check out of that one, go to the next movement and do that. You know, so. Can you describe your transition from the UFC to PFL? I mean, you had your struggles in the UFC, but now you're 2-0 in the PFL. Can you talk about how, yeah, your transition and how you've uh, found success? My transition to the PFL has been great, and that's because of what they've done for me. They've done a great job with welcoming me in and giving me an opportunity to get out here and perform and get back to winning. And I'm just happy to be here, so I'm going to continue to do the best I could possibly do to be a professional for the PFL and represent them the best I possibly can. So any other organization that I don't compete for, I don't worry about. You're no stranger to the tournament, won the Bellator tournament, now you're in another tournament. What's the difference between the two? Uh, just different promotion, different organization. Nothing that, none of this stuff changes. I don't care what organization I fight for, I go out there and I try to represent that organization to the best I possibly can, like I just told this gentleman over here, and just be professional at all times, you know. Uh, but at the same time, remember what I showed up to do, which is my job, which is go out there and fight and take care of my family. So it doesn't matter to me, uh, playoff, regular season playoff, format, tournament format, it doesn't matter to me, regular format, it does not matter. My job is always the same. Just building off that, though, I mean, it does seem that you thrive in tournaments from, from Bellator to now. Uh, is there anything about them that uh, particularly speaks to you? No, I think I always try to use the analogy like I'm, I feel like I'm like a rhythm shooter, you know? Like you have a lot of guys in the NBA, NBA that like they just catch and shoot, catch and shoot, and they get into a rhythm, and now they can't miss a three, you know? Like, uh, like Steph Curry, you know, that guy, once he gets into a rhythm, he's hitting every shot from way from half court almost, you know, and things like that. And I think I'm similar to that, you know. I keep that mindset when I come into fighting is, you know, you catch a win, you catch a rhythm, you get, you get your feet underneath you, you take that back into the into the gym and you keep that going. So it's a, I'm a rhythm type of guy and I got my rhythm, I got my feet under me, I'm getting back to winning and I'm comfortable in, in the new skin I'm in, you know, and that's also a big, big, uh, big benefit to where I'm at in my life right now. You said on Tuesday that you usually freestyle your fights, but now that you're in the playoffs and you're going up against someone you have a lot of time in between, will you spend a little more time watching tape at all and just stick to a specific game plan? No, my coaches will watch more tape. I don't watch tape. I watch some tape only when my coaches tell me that they need me to watch tape. And that's when when they tell me that they need me to watch tape is more watching tape on what I'm doing, what I made a mistake on, what I need to do better. But as far as my opponents go, my coaches watch all the tape and then they tell me what I need to go and do just because that's how I operate, that's how I work. Uh, I come from a military family background, so it was more like, yes sir, no sir, and you don't ask questions, you just go out there and get the job done. So that's how I approach it. So yeah, my coaches will look at more tape and they'll create a game plan and I'll go and accomplish that game plan to the best I possibly can. You know?
if you'd say you're a rhythm fighter, so to speak, does the idea of fighting twice in one night then kind of lend itself to that? Uh, yeah, man, I love that idea. I, I love it because you have to keep your body going. A lot of times you have this issue of you fight and then you have to sit around for even during this process of the two uh, regular season fights, you still have a few weeks in between there. We have to sit around and wait for it and then you build up to it. But being able to fight twice in one night, is it, it works out for me because I also have a wrestling background, you know, so I was able to wrestle four or five times in one day on Saturdays, you know, and sometimes you wrestle on a Friday and turn around and wrestle in a tournament on Saturday. So all that stuff is like, it's it's right in my wheelhouse. I'm very, very comfortable in that space, you know. Uh, you mentioned family. That's really a motivating factor for you in this tournament. What would it mean to you? It would mean like just again, just me taking care of my family. That's just my job, you know. And um, for a little bit, it took me a little bit to get comfortable with that new role, you know. It's something that I had a, a bit of a difficult time understanding that I couldn't be selfish anymore. It was more being selfless and just trying to find a way to, you know, incorporate that into what I do as a professional because this is an individual sport. Now you have to be. How do I be selfish, selfish and selfless at the same time? And I found my uh, my ability to do that now, and you know, winning a million dollars would just benefit my my family a great deal, you know. And you know, we're doing well financially. My wife is very very cheap, so she don't let me buy nothing, you know. So we're doing good, but a uh, million dollars changes everybody's lives, you know. That'll change. I know, right? Yeah, it changes some things, you know. What are you gonna buy? Nothing. Probably some more t-shirts and jeans. That's what I do. I don't buy nothing special, man. I buy my wife something. And that's about it. Then I buy, I might go to Target. That's uh, Target, Target for anybody. And I buy t-shirts, man. I got four or five of the same t-shirts because I just go to Target and buy t-shirts. So that's what I do. All right, what are you going to buy for the wife? What I buy the wife? Whatever she's trying to like hint at me about, you know, she throws a little couple of hints at me. And I guess this is really cute. I like this. So that's pretty much, hey, why don't you go get that for me? So I just keep an ear out for whatever she needs, you know? Thank you. Okay. All right. Nice well. Cool. Right on.